Happy Deepavali with uh, George Maragos who is uh, helping Nasa County as uh, controller. And first of all, I greet you on this important festival uh, for Hindus across the globe, uh, a key festival for all Indians. Uh, share your thoughts and feelings on being a part of this celebration here. Well, first of all, thank you for inviting me and a happy Diwali to you and all the Indian Americans, especially the India Americans that live in Nassau County and, of course, Suffolk County as well. I'm delighted to be here, to be part of this uh, extraordinary uh, celebration. And I, I want to wish everybody a very happy, a prosperous, and a healthy new year. And taking the advantage of your presence and uh, seeking the secret of your smile, uh, when we celebrate Deepavali, we worship uh, goddess uh, Lakshmi Ji, who is considered to be the goddess of wealth. And you are actually uh, in some direct, indirect way related to uh, wealth and, of course, uh, help people save uh, wastage of wealth. So what is your tip for us how to stay healthy and wealthy? Well, be, be humble, be frugal, and uh, work hard. And um, help your fellow man, your, your fellow person, because now we're, you, we have to be bisexual. So, uh, But that's do the best you can. Uh, and don't, don't worry about, uh, you know, that maybe sometimes you're going to fail. Just get up and, and try again. And if you continue to do your best, I think you're going to find happiness and success. And uh, share with us, uh, what do you think is the most important opportunity that you get as controller, which is satisfying to you? Helping people, doing, being in, in a position where you can, uh, if you do, do something right, you can have a big impact in helping people live a better life and be, be happier, be more prosperous. And that gives me tremendous satisfaction. And I must thank you. You are uh, quite friendly with minorities in Nasa County. From that point of view, how do you see the role of uh, Indian Americans here? Uh, well, uh, you know, Indian Americans are the fastest growing uh, minority in, in Nassau County. And all our minorities in, in general now represent about 35% of the total Nassau County population. So they're a rapidly uh, growing minority. They're very uh, prosperous. They're hardworking. They're mainly professionals and small business people. And, and we're you know, delighted to have them. They're a, an integral part of our community that uh, makes our community more, more prosperous for everybody. So I appreciate um, your encouraging uh, approach towards one and all. And uh, anything in particular that you would like to share uh, related to any initiative which might be relevant for our viewers? Well, it is. Recently, we announced, my office announced a major initiative to help minorities, minority and women-owned businesses. Uh, the, that uh, we plan on, on doubling the, the amount of business, a 100% increase over what we were doing in previous years. And we're talking about maybe $100, $200 million of additional business that we want to target minority businesses to take advantage of. And so I, I welcome the Indian American community uh, to participate, to reach out to my office. We have Dilip, who's our, our Indian American Outreach Coordinator. So whatever the community needs, we want to be of service to the community to make them even more prosperous in Nassau County than they are now. I wish you lots of success in uh, achieving the goals that you have set for yourself because that involves uh, the benefit of the whole community. Lots of good wishes. Thank, Thank you, you very much and a happy new year. Happy Diwali. Happy Diwali. Thank you. Dilip Ji, we have known you as a community friend and share with us your role with Nasa County uh, Comptroller's Office. Now, the Comptroller appointed me as the Director of the Southeast Asian Affairs. So my job is to make sure that our minority, like the Indian, Indian American community is a minority community. So how they can participate in the county government contract process. So that's what I do, the outreach. 
I encourage businesses to reach out to the, our office and if they have any question how to reach out, how to uh, work with the government agencies. So definitely I'm going to helpful to them. So would you be kind enough to share any website or email uh, which can help and connect with you? No, uh, nasacountyny.gov, that is a website. And the, my contact information that I will give you the card so you can put it so people can contact me anytime. And any uh, specific business um, area that you think uh, is uh, kind of more qualified to work with the government? See, there are more than 2,000 different kind of the businesses are, so it depends, like the person working in the business he is in, in. So on the small to big, like the engineering firm, construction firm, so it depends on the person requirement, what kind of the business he is. But definitely the county is going to help them to reach out to the government agencies. Happy Diwali. And this is the place is called the Suffolk Jewish Community Center. And we are celebrating Diwali. This is our 18th year of celebrating Diwali. Okay, so when Bakulbai is saying we, it is uh, the Gujarati Association of Long Island. It's a Gujarati uh, Association of Long Island called the Gujarati Cultural Society. And we are the proud association of 2,000 Gujarati families living on, Gujar on the uh, Suffolk and Nassau County on Long Island. And we're representing about 2,000 Gujaratis. Wonderful. So right now we are standing in front of the cutout of uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi here. Uh, and he has uh, made Indians proud recently by visiting UK and the kind of reception which was accorded to him. How do you see he has been inspiring Gujaratis here? Oh. He is a big influence on us. He is a, even though I'm a pure Gandhian uh, follower, Narendra Modi is also a Gandhian follower, and he has a discipline that we all have to learn. He is a pure, his attitude is, is unbelievable, and it is inspiring the way most people say something, he also he says something, but he shows in his work. And Vagul yeah, when you are away from India, uh, getting people together in the name of uh, even an important festival like Diwali is not an easy task. How challenging it is for you to organize uh, on such a large scale? Oh Well, this is our 18th year. We've been doing it for 18 years. It's getting bigger and bigger. We have our, um, the level of our uh, uh, this uh, Diwali festival is going higher. We are getting so many people coming in. During the Navratri, we had 1,100 people showed up. In Diwali today, we have about 600 people here, and it is a wonderful event. We are all here, all the Gujarati communities get together, and we are celebrating. This is the biggest Diwali celebration of the Gujarati community. So, Bagulai, lastly, I know a lot of things are demanding your attention, but um, getting together, eating together, and probably enjoying music is one thing, but then uh, helping our uh, second generation learn about the profound aspect related to the festival is also important. Do you have some programs uh, on the, that in that direction? Absolutely, yeah. Our focus is not only the entertainment. Entertainment is part of it, and we do, do celebrate all our Indian uh, festivals. But at the same time, we also celebrate our um, uh, educational charity, and we instill the, our customary values in our new generations. We have a Gujarati classes, Hindi classes, we also thinking about Sanskrit now. And uh, we have a senior citizens also, a senior citizen wing. We have a ladies also uh, wing also. So we are learning, uh, we are teaching also to our new generation. <laughs> Americans uh, for such a long time share uh, your impressions about uh, this community oh I've been actively involved uh, in, in the Indian community uh, for many many years uh, uh, participating in Shanti fund events 
uh, probably about 20 years, long before I was ever elected to office. Uh, Bob Mattaglia, Arvin Vora, they're dear friends of mine, and uh, they've really helped me to uh, experience uh, this culture. And uh, the, not much of a, every holiday that comes by, whether it be celebrating Gandhiji's birthday or the Balia uh, celebration that we're having today, uh, it's an important aspect. Uh, the United States is blessed to be made up of so many different cultures, and as an elected official, uh, it's really an honor to be able to be exposed to all of these cultures and, and integrate them into uh, my daily life. Um, I'm a big fan of Indian food these days and, uh, and uh, even the spicy stuff. But uh, this is really a wonderful uh, holiday that unites uh, all the Indian religions and it's, uh, I'm proud to be a part of it. <laughs> Switching gears slightly and uh, looking at the fact what happened in Paris yesterday and as uh, a representative of uh, people, you have your own set of concerns. So, how do you feel uh, the rise of ISIS uh, collectively as a world community? Are we responding to them in the right manner? Uh, how do you feel about America's preparedness to face any challenge of this kind? Well, unfortunately, you know, it, no matter what religion you have, you're going to have extremists in those religions. And, and really the, way, the best way to stem the tide of that ex extremism is by having those um, individuals that are less extreme stand up and take a position. So I think it's really incumbent upon um, the non, you know, everyone in Islam that's, that's not radicalized uh, to really step up and say enough is enough. We need to stand united with everybody else. This is not what Islam stands for. Uh, Islam is, is, is a caring uh, religion. And, uh, and unfortunately, there are those that uh, are, are really destroying uh, what the Prophet Muhammad uh, you know, is teaching. And are we prepared? I think we're better prepared than most. Uh, I think we saw in France what happens when you have uh, an open border uh, we have a porous border, uh, so we need to do more to prevent uh, individuals from crossing uh, our borders that would do us harm. Uh, but I think this is a wake-up call for the entire world, and it's my hope that uh, our, our world leaders are listening. Lastly, uh, looking at the time concerns, I would uh, love to have you for an extended conversation at our studio. Uh, but when you wake up, uh, every day you have different targets for yourself, uh, but there must be some consistent theme in your mind with reference to the way you want to serve the community, the kind of challenges that you feel are uh, uh, facing people that you are representing. Well, every day I wake up and my job is to help people, uh, whether it be somebody that just got burned out of their house to, uh, to a fire, to helping uh, a, a microbrewery that uh, is trying to open up for business. Um, that's what we do as legislators. We get elected to, to cut red tape. We get elected to uh, make people's lives better. Uh, obviously, living on Long Island, one of our biggest uh, threats are, are high taxes. Uh, our young people, unfortunately, go to college and they can't afford to come back and live here. And, and pretty soon, Long Island is going to be the land of the haves and the have-nots, and the middle class will cease to exist. Uh, so it's always we're always trying to think of different ways, better ways, to make uh, living on Long Island easier, uh, both in your pocketbook uh, as as well as your quality of life. I appreciate uh, your uh, vision and uh, your uh, sincere commitment to improve uh, the quality of life for people. Lots of Thank good you. wishes, sir. Thank you very much. Welcome uh, to this uh, Diwali celebration here. Um, and uh, share with me your impressions about Indian American, American community. Oh, well, I, I must say, I, this is my uh, third year uh, being elected to the State Assembly, and this is my third year I've been at this event, and I look forward to coming here every year. It's great to see everybody get together and celebrate. The children get in, inside and perform. It's, it's really amazing to watch the culture have part of the, the food is just delicious. I couldn't eat it every day, but uh, just the whole uh, Indian American culture just... Having a part of it in my district, I have a lot of um, Indian Americans in my district, and 
you know, just to be a part of this tonight. It just, it, I'm very excited to be here, and it's just great to, you know, great to experience it all. And when you define the set of uh, challenges which exist uh, for people in uh, your uh, district area, what comes uh, on the top two uh, in that list? Uh, for the people in my district, uh, well, my district's along the south shore of, uh, of Suffolk County and Islip and Brookhaven and uh, all of Fire Island. And one of the things that uh, we really had to deal with recently since I was elected was, uh, you know, Hurricane Sandy came in and uh, really devastated the area. And uh, one of the big challenges is people are still rebuilding. Um, you know, uh, New York Rising was a pro program that the, uh, the state started, and it's just... It really hasn't done what we've wanted it to do. It hasn't really helped the people it's needed. We've, it's needed to help. Uh, so that's something we're still challenging, and it's almost it's over. It's a uh, couple years since it's happened, and uh, there's still people who are not in their homes. Uh, still people that are rebuilding, haven't gotten money from the government that uh, they were supposed to get. So that's one of the biggest challenges we're still facing. I think a lot of other people around the state have forgotten that. Uh, so you know, one of the big uh, things that we're going to have to do in the, in the next session is bring that back to the forefront. Um, you know, another thing that we, we deal with is just, you know, school funding. Um, over the past couple of years, the, uh, the state has come back with some more funding, but it, they haven't made up uh, what they cut about five, six years ago. So um, it's really caused a lot of school districts to, um, you know, to pinch pennies. You know, in, in some areas that was good, but it's also, you know, hurt because, you know, you've, you've lost a lot of teachers, you've lost a lot of, you know, programs that, uh, you know, on Long Island, we're just you know it was great for the kids to have because it would really prepare them for the world. So hopefully uh, this year we're uh, we're going to bring back the funding that that they had six years ago and bring everything back to normal. So there is a constant struggle, uh, and that is a part of what you are doing in order to serve people better. And uh, looking at the time constraint that we have, but uh, there are certain events. Uh, which happened very tragic, very sad, and recently what happened in Paris uh, has uh, made many politicians uh, react to it, including uh, as we are in the middle of the presidential uh, race. Uh, so Republic uh, candidates have responded differently and Democrats have differently. How do you feel personally uh, when such a thing happened? Um, any politician saying anything, they say that it is politicization of uh, the terror attack. But collectively uh, looking for a potential solid solution, what would be uh, your view? Uh, well, first off, my thoughts and prayers are with uh, the, peop the citizens of Paris and uh, about this terrible tragedy. It's, it's really, when I heard it last night... Um, on the way home from work, I was just very, uh, yeah, I was devastated. It's it, it, anything like this it can really, you know, Republican, Democrat, everybody's going to feel the same way. Everybody's going to be disgusted with, with what happened. And, uh, and uh, I, I don't know if, if people coming out and, and speaking about it is uh, politicizing the issue, you know, as uh, they can, it, yeah, people can politicize it, but I think coming out and, and saying, you know, you know, that your, our prayers are with you and, um, you know, trying to come to a peaceful, resolution or solution to what's going on, you know, to stop these events from happening again is, uh, you know, I don't think that's politicizing the issue, but, you know, I spent time last year in Turkey, uh, and uh, when I was in with the Turkish people, they were disgusted with what ISIS was doing. You know, it, when somebody said something to me specifically, they said, you know, if, 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 what the, if, if, if they're Islam, then we're not Islam. If we're Islam, then they're not Islam. So they even... Um, the people over in the Middle East are starting, I think, to be fed up with what is going on, and um, it's it's very you know it's sad to say, but I think an event like this really will get hopefully get everybody on the same page, and we can move forward and, and really put a stop to uh, all the you know all the you know, tragedies that are happening you know because of uh, because of all this this fighting. It's really, but you know last night's events were just you know it's it's too much to just to. To take in. So there were uh, some apprehensions that uh, France uh, was not uh, adequately uh, prepared to find out what happened in advance. So there was a lack of, uh, call it uh, security. Uh, uh, what what is the exact term for it? The intelligence uh, information was missing at the right time. Now, when such counter-terror measures are undertaken, 
many times many countries feel that in order to be politically correct they miss out on some important information how do you feel because that issue is big here in america also uh, it leads to potentially racial profiling um you know it, you want to make sure that you have the correct intelligence to prevent tragedies like this from happening um i can't speak to whether or not you know Paris was or France was doing the the correct thing. Uh, I'm not in, in, in don't have that uh, knowledge, but um, you know something I've always you know I, I'm a straightforward guy. You know, if, if I'm not, I don't mind if somebody's going to look at me. I don't mind it because I know I'm not doing anything wrong. It seems to me the the a lot of the uh, problems that people have with this is they've got something to hide. You know, I, I think most people would not uh, would not care because they're not doing anything wrong. Most people are not going to go out and and uh, cause uh you know uh, a, a terroristic act like this. It's it's so I, I think uh the real people that are they're fighting this, you know, yeah, yeah, there's you know there's the constitutional freedoms, but I'm not saying about I'm not talking about treading on them. If if we want to be safe, people don't want to ha what happened in Paris to, to happen again. People don't want what happened on September 11th to happen again. So, you know, I'm not saying give it up give up every freedom, but if you have nothing to hide what you know if you're not going to do anything wrong what i don't understand what the big deal is so um you know i think i think the intelligence community has done a great job from what i from what i i've read um recently you know in 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 the US uh, they they you know there haven't been really any attacks so you know maybe what what they are doing is you know is what needs to be done So lastly uh, every individual is cut out for something specific in your case the kind of role that you have adopted for yourself so you're going out meeting uh, people people from different ethnicity and uh, there is something in you which uh, makes you uh, at ease uh, with everyone uh, is it something that you are born with or you would like to uh, remember somebody as your inspiration or role model in uh, uh, this ability to connect with people um I, i don't you know i don't know where i learned it I, it might be something i was born with because it, it's funny my parents have always said when i was growing up uh, you know if we'd always we go on family trips and uh we'd all be on the airplane if there was one seat that was away from everyone else they'd put me in it because they know wherever i sat i would i would make friends and talk to whoever was next to me so <laughs> So I think I've had it for a long time. I don't know where I learned it. Um I really don't have anybody, you know. You know, my if I if, if someone who who does do that, it my dad has he, he you know, he's not a famous role model, but he's my role model. Um and you know, he's always been very good uh with people in public. He was an attorney. He's an attorney. He's been a attorney for 40 years. But uh he probably seeing him talk to everybody growing up probably made me more comfortable with it and uh, I love it. You know, I just feel, you know, like I said I'm a straight shooter guy and you know, whatever, you know, I just I'd like to talk to people, you know. I like talking to you as well. <laughs> Thank you Thank very, you very much. much. Thank you very much. Raksha karo jagadamba bhavani Raksha karo jagadamba bhavani Nishad